flash floods have hit parts of Saudi Arabia as heavy rainfall has been recorded across the kingdom since last week. Saudi Arabia is known for its hostile climate of little rainfall. Being a conglomerate of mostly desert and partly arid lands, the land has been far from green. However, a shocking phenomenon is currently happening in the desert land. Surprisingly, the desert is rapidly turning into fertile farmlands, and this is a shocking phenomenon to even scientists. What is happening in this desert? Keep watching this video to find out. Before we go into details of the causes of the increasingly miraculous farmlands in Saudi Arabia, it might do you some good to know how dry this country initially was. We had long known and associated Saudi Arabia with scorching heat, dryness, and deserts. This was right. In fact, Saudi Arabia is the home of the world's largest desert, Rub al Khali, with an expanse of 650,000 square kilometers. This, in fact, was the size of a whole country. Again, do you know that this country, the 14th largest country in the world, with a total landscape of 2.14 square kilometers, does not have a single permanent river? If you think you've heard it all, relax, because we're just getting started. We said earlier that Saudi Arabia is one country with very little rainfall. Now, let's be specific. Historically, the country has never seen an annual rainfall of more than 150 millimeters. This needs to be a better ratio. Because of this, a large part of Saudi Arabia has been majorly dry, leaving just a small part of the southwest region for planting. Even up until the late 1960s, the country was recorded to still have as low as 400 square kilometers of fertile land. This is 0.5% of the entire country. At this point, you may wonder how the citizens had survived in terms of agricultural products. Well, the answer is plausible. Before the country started experiencing a breakthrough in the increase of farmlands, the citizens survived mainly by planting small fields with local crops. In contrast, all other necessary food items that could not be planted were imported. At that time, narrow strips of coastal lines were the only planting area, and only a few crops, like dates and vegetables, were grown. With a country that big, this limitation was no good news. Now let's talk about the miraculous oil dam, a crucial element in the shocking increasing farmlands in Saudi Arabia. Though the country lacked water, it definitely needed more. In fact, Saudi Arabia turns out to be a country with the world's largest oil reserve. Well, as they say, God deposits something in everyone that makes them special. This proved true for Saudi Arabia, when somewhere in March 1934, a large amount of crude oil was discovered in a dam oil field. The dam went so deep that it reached a depth of 1,440 meters. Thus, the country soon became a holder of about 17% of the world's identified petroleum reserves. This reserve was estimated to be around 75 million barrels of oil. So with the wealth in oil resources, the Saudi Arabian government thought it could do more. And thus, the process of the miracle of rapidly increasing farmlands began. Fast forwarding to the present, Saudi Arabia can now be added to the modern seven wonders of the world. This is because what used to be a center of importation of food items is now a center of exportation of wheat, date, dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, birds, fruits, vegetables, and even flowers. But how did the fortune of a country that was nearly all desert change from a food importer to a food exporter? What are the Saudi Arabians doing that we don't know? Though it appears to be so, the fact that the desert lands of Saudi Arabia are rapidly turning to fertile farmlands is no magic at all. While some contributing factors were pure luck, a larger percentage of the causes of this shocking phenomenon resulted from a combination of deliberate plans and actions carried out by the Saudi Arabian government. 
But what exactly did they do? Well, hang on as I take you through the strategic processes alongside the lucky occurrences that turned a desert into fertile land. First, they invested massively in technology. This is because technological equipment was needed to provide everything that would transform desert land into fertile farmlands. So the agricultural state of Saudi Arabia has been transformed through massive investment in programs that promote modern farming technology and rural infrastructural elements. Being a country immensely enriched with oil, the government of Saudi Arabia didn't sit back and relax. Instead, they channeled the nation's resources into developing fertile grounds for the people. Early in their investment venture, the government had focused intensively on establishing facilities for producing dairy, meats, and poultry food. By 1985, the nation had started swimming in self-sufficiency with products like meat, milk, and eggs. Not only were they self-sufficient, but they became massive exporters of agricultural products as well. Also, during this period, there was a massive output of milk production, which amounted to about 1,800 gallons per cow annually. Fish farms were also on the rise. These farms were established in locations that were both on land and at sea. The establishment of these fish farms led to the production of seafood. Amongst this seafood, the shrimps were highly enriching for the country. Consequently, Saudi Arabia became a massive shrimp exporter to countries like Japan and the USA. Sales of the black tiger breed of shrimps were particularly successful. Also, because of the efforts put in by the governments of Saudi Arabia, the nation soon moved quickly from being an importer of wheat to an exporter of the same. Wheat silos built in 1978 soon became wheat sufficient in 1984. Major grain producing districts in Tepak Hall and Kazim now have an output of about 3.6 tons of wheat per acre. There were also productions of other grains like barley and millet. After a while, grain production became so massive that it had to be curtailed to conserve water resources. As farming and transportation methods improved, there was an increase in the production of essential farm produce, like fruits and vegetables. Consequently, products like watermelon, grape, citrus fruits, onions, squash, and tomatoes were famous in the area and were major items of exportation. Again, what the increase in farming activities meant for the people of Saudi Arabia was an increase in the availability of local cuisines. These cousins included dates. Consequently, about half a million tons of dates were produced annually in different varieties. Soon, many factories within the country became actively involved in the production of tens of thousands of tons of dates to help alleviate poverty and food shortages worldwide. The nation became so active in foreign aid that it became the second largest contributor to food aid in the UN. It definitely should feel good to be in Saudi Arabia now. Another thing that aided the rapid improvement of the architectural state of the country was the government's willingness to support local farmers. One of the ways through which they did this was to provide interest-free loans and technical support services to farmers. Again, the farmers had access to low-cost water, fuel, and power alongside duty-free importation of raw materials and machinery that aided their farming. Also, the government was wise and generous enough to offer mouth-watering benefits to investors. So foreign venture partners were exempted from paying taxes for up to 10 years. The investment regulations that were set up in April 2000 went further to offer extra incentives. None of this would have been possible if not for the efforts of the country's Ministry of Agriculture, which made favorable policies to help local farmers. Also, Saab, the Saudi Arabian Agricultural Bank, continued to provide interest-free loans and subsidies to aid farmers in achieving maximum farming results. Grain silos and flour mill organizations were also established in 1972, and they were responsible for buying and storing wheat, building flour mills, and producing animal feed. The construction of modernized highways connected agricultural regions to major markets. The government also undertook capital-intensive projects 
that supported farmers with high capital needs, thus aiding the diversification of the economy. The government also supported research programs that were aided at producing new food crops, increasing crop yield, and finding new ways to make crops pest resistant. Local farmers and scientists also collaborated in agricultural research facilities within different universities in the country. Literally, all hands were on deck. Water, being an essential part of agriculture, was also needed. Since Saudi Arabia lacked water, it needed some luck and brains to achieve agricultural success. Here's how the challenge of water got solved. First, they used aquifers. Saudi Arabia happens to not be so dry after all. Deep tube wells were drilled in the most promising urban and agricultural locations. This was an ancient water source that Saudi Arabia now fully relied on. The aquifers are now one of the major sources of water for the Saudi Arabians in their pursuit of green land. Again, the country succeeded in maximizing the seawater available to them. Being rich in the coastal lines that stretched from the Persian Gulf to the Red Sea, the government soon engaged in desalination activities. As a result, seawater was soon converted to potable water, usable in homes and industries. Consequently, the Saline Water Conversion Corporation SWCC, operated about 27 desalination plants within the country, producing more than 3 million cubic meters of potable water daily. Finally, the country evolved to what became known as electric power recycled water to tackle water shortage. This process involved recycling of the water that was used for domestic purposes. For this reason, water recycling factories were built in the capital city and other large metropolitan industrial centers to help recycle water. Now, the irrigation of farm fields is done mostly with recycled water. All these processes soon made water available on the land and aided agriculture. We've come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Now you know why the deserts of Saudi Arabia are becoming green fields. But what do you think about this phenomenon? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you like this video, ensure to hit the like button, share, and subscribe for more.